So guys, there we go, here's the first video from the CES 2019 and it's about my first brand visit and the newest television trends from Skyworth. So far most people know that there are two main types of displays, liquid crystal displays and OLEDs. Now it gets really confusing as there is so much excitement about micro LEDs. All major display makers have now invested in the technology and other semiconductor or hardware companies such as Intel, Facebook or Google have joined the pool. Micro-LED technology is a fantastic Frankenstein combination of both approaches. While they admit their own red, green and blue colors without the need of an extra backlight, Micro-LED pixels don't rely on organic compounds like OLEDs, which means that they don't degrade in the same way, and they're also very energy efficient. While Micro-LEDs require a major technology breakout in assembly and structure, as well as a significant overhaul of the manufacturing infrastructure, Mini-LED chips are just scaled down traditional LEDs. So they can be manufactured in existing fabs with no or little additional investment. On the application side, Micro-LEDs promise lays in the realization of disruptive, high-pixel density, self-emissive displays, while Mini-LEDs can be used to upgrade existing liquid crystal displays with ultra-thin, multi-zone local dimming backlight units, also called BLUs. That enables form factors and contrast performance close to or even better than organic light emitting diodes. So I was actually shocked when they told me that the screen I'm looking at was not an OLED, because it really looked like an OLED. It was an LCD with the thinnest backlight unit on the market, and to be honest, it looked great. Also micro LEDs are for sure more expensive, so I'm looking forward to some cheaper solutions, but still good looking mini LED TVs. Next off, I've seen that there are transparent TVs, which are already selling in China. The actual OLED materials are transparent, and indeed, it's possible to fabricate transparent OLEDs. I really don't get the point of having such a TV, but I have to admit, it looks cool. But you clearly see that it's not as bright as a regular OLED, and viewing something on it feels very different. So just as 4K TVs were beginning to take off, 8K started appearing. If you use basic math, it may seem like 8K would provide double the resolution of 4K, but that isn't the case. Since we're talking two dimensions here, horizontal lines and vertical lines, so it's actually a whopping 16 times of the pixel of HD and 4 times of the pixels of 4K. So Skywolf has now shown their 8K OLED TV and it looked really great, even though it's hard to spot a difference on smaller screen sizes to 4K. There also isn't much 8K content you could watch at home, even if you had an 8K TV right now. But native 8K content isn't the only reason to have an 8K TV if you're looking at a really large screen size. The 8K TVs of the future will upscale 4K content to 8K, and the difference in clarity is definitely visible. It will probably take even as long as for 8K content to be widely available as it took with 4K now, and 4K is still in the early state. But as you can see, technically everything is possible. All the TVs are getting incredibly thin due to the LED technology. And that means that also 70% of the users will choose the way of wall mounting. Now many companies like Skywolf are having separate designs and they put the circuit board and the audio in the host, making the body thinner and really light. The TV screen is connected to the host via a transparent integrated data cable, which is easy to be sorted out. The connections for the host body are hidden in the wall, and with that you can get a flat, good-looking TV and a base station below with a Dolby Atmos sound system. Well, design is a matter of taste, and I would probably go with a regular OLED with a stand. Now we all know that there are not too many panel manufacturers worldwide, so one of the little things that differentiates TV manufacturers is the processing and the chipset inside, but also as well their software. As Skywolf is one of the biggest companies in China, they have cooperated with another big player, which is Huawei, on their AI chip. Now, Skywolf creates a professional picture quality processing chip, which is named Chameleon, to improve the picture display quality, including the following technologies dynamic target remodeling, AI scene recognition, and much more, leading to high end picture quality experience. To be honest, to really compare it, I need more time and check other TVs as well. But they had a comparison running on the same TV, and the processing, especially the motion clarity, was clearly visible. Skywolf now also offers a technology similar to Sony's acoustic surface, 
They call it Crystal Sound OLED and it makes the whole panel the speaker, with full stereo sound and upscaling. There is also a subwoofer, but not as on Sony TVs next to the panel, it's extra behind the TV, giving it more bass. To be honest, it sounds good, but I couldn't clearly tell if it's better or similar to the AF9. Anyways, I love this technology and I would love to see it on most TVs in the future. 2019 is also the year of OLEDs getting more affordable. The biggest one they offer is 77 inch and it's on sale now. It's still not cheap, but I guess in the second half of 2019 we'll see some massive OLED price drops on the mainstream panel sizes like 50 to 55 inches. It's quite interesting and I got some good insights on the trends for 2019. Regardless of what hardware is coming, one thing can be sure. They will all have Android TV in the future and this OS will slowly replace everything we have. Also, TVs will play a big role in our smart home integration and come with field microphones for voice control. It seems like this, what I've seen as future a few years ago, slowly becomes a reality. So just to clarify it, Skywolf has invited me and paid my trip to the CES. So without them, this trip wouldn't have been possible. So big thanks to Skywolf and stay tuned for more from the CES. Let me know down below in the comments what you want to see. So far I've seen some self-driving bikes, crazy foldable displays and some new weird technology trends. So stay tuned. Big thanks for watching, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye bye.